I spent like 12 hours the other day building this giant ski resort for my sims. It was on a huge lot. It was like five stories tall. I mean, I think this is probably one of the biggest builds I've ever done. It was actually really fun to build and I'm really proud of it. But oh my God, I'm currently feeling like I don't want to even ever look at a lot that big ever again. I'm sure I'll get over that soon, but for now I need to think tiny. Tiny houses are the way. So I think I might try to build something that is like the complete exact opposite of that ski lodge. I just made a giant snowy winter resort. So what if I made a tiny desert house? It's only a 20 by 15 lot. We can make it into a tiny house and maybe I could try to limit packs as well because the resort used like every single pack. Maybe this one could be just like the base game and, and one or two others. This is also one of my favorite lots in the game purely because of that dinosaur. There's there's just something about him that really speaks to me. I guess I'll need tiny living because it's gonna be a tiny house. And I'm kind of wanting to build like a loft or something. I have this vision in my head of an open upstairs. I don't really know what it's gonna look like exactly, but this is kind of what I'm going for. And maybe we could use a bunch of eco lifestyle or something. But first I wanna give a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video, ThreadUp. If you haven't heard of them before, ThreadUp is the largest online thrift store and they have a huge selection of amazing, affordable affordable secondhand clothing. I just bought a couple things to wear to TwitchCon in October, including this cute little shirt. I totally get the desire to buy new stuff when you've got a special event or things like that coming up. And that's part of why ThreadUp has been so great for me because instead of buying things new for conventions and things like that, I can be more sustainable and buy them secondhand, but also from the convenience of my own home. And on top of being more sustainable, you can also get stuff for really good prices. Like this shirt is originally from Anthropology, and the estimated retail is like $50, but I got it for $28. This is a real nice quality t-shirt that originally was $30. I only paid 15. This one kind of has Where's Waldo energy, but it was only $10 and I like the stripes. And this is one of the things that I bought because I think I'm going to wear it to the convention. If you like any of the things that I got, you can actually shop the pieces that I picked and similar items through my link down below. And ThreadUp has very generously offered 40% off your first order with code Kayla if you use my link down below. So thank you. Thank you to ThreadUp for sponsoring this video. I hope that you all can find some cute stuff. And with that, let's get back into the build. This feels like a brand of fresh air, to be honest. It's nice to have something small, especially when it's so different from what I've been working on all week. Now, a couple disclaimers about this build. Obviously, I set out trying to make a tiny house. With tiny living, there's a few different tiers of tiny homes, and I was hoping to make it a tier two one that's only 64 tiles. That did not work out. It ends up being 100 tiles. So you still get some tiny house perks, but this isn't exactly my best tiny house. I probably could have done it a little bit better by like sneaking to make some rooms fake rooms rooms and stuff like that, but I, I just didn't really bother. I was more worried about looks than about like tiny house bonuses. You also may have noticed that I started this with starter home funds, and that's because initially I set out to build a starter home and that very, very quickly changed. <laughs> so I wanted it to be small and cute and cheap. Again, kind of playing off of that giant build thing. The, the resort was like 370,000 simoleons <laughs> or something. So I was kind of gonna try and make this one cheaper, but but it, it didn't work out. I think it ends up being like 37,000, which isn't too bad, but considering it's it's just one tiny little building, it's kind of expensive. And there's a couple really fun features. So for example, there's two balconies. There's one off of the loft upstairs, and then there's a ladder that takes you to the rooftop. Rooftops are really, really popular within my audience. I say this because whenever I do a build on stream, I swear half the chat is like, what if there was a rooftop garden? What if there was a rooftop garden? There's a couple things that get very frequently suggested and rooftop gardens, bookcase doors, and as of recently, like wine cellar, nectar cellar type things are really, really commonly asked for. If it were up to them, they would have a rooftop garden on every single build. Like even when it's probably not appropriate, they'd still want one. <laughs> but this time, this time we could fit it in. You know what? I actually kind of matched the color scheme of this house today. I didn't plan that. The house is orange, not yellow, but I, I feel like it kind of works. But I used a lot of orange and gray throughout this whole house. Eco Lifestyle has kind of this like orangey toned wood on a lot of the windows. So I use that as the main inspiration for the color scheme. Kind of just basing off of the windows that I was using. They had this nice swatch. So I just kept it like everywhere. And it was around this point in the build where I realized that the starter home thing was not gonna work. <laughs> Cause I had spent like half the budget just on the exterior. And I was like, wow, you know, I guess it would be possible to furnish the inside with just like 8,000 thousand simoleons, but I don't really want to. <laughs> so I ended up kind of just giving up and giving myself some more money. There is a very 
very small backyard, back patio area. And there's like this lovely pathway that takes you all the way back there. Originally, I was kind of just going for like house that has eco lifestyle things in it. But then I realized the solar panels looked kind of cool. So I went for just general eco house. I used the solar panels upstairs. There's a few like other eco-y things happening. And then I really struggled with landscaping. I think desert builds give me an issue a lot with the landscaping. I like to do very lush like flowers and bushes everywhere. And you can't really do that in the desert. I mean, I guess you can, but if I'm making an eco house, I probably should shouldn't have like grass all over the place. It's sort of a strange addition. You can pretend that it's turf, but even turf isn't that good for the environment, right? Like it's not, it's plastic, so it, it can't be good. It's, it's probably best to just leave what is natural <laughs> instead of putting like plastic all over your yard. But in general, yards are bad. Like, so I just kind of struggled with that, with the whole eco vibes. It was kind of throwing me. If I had built this somewhere else, the plants may have been a better vibe, but because it's an Oasis Springs, I had to make do with what I had. And I ended up using a lot of debug landscaping. There's some really nice like debuggy desert plants. Basically a lot of the things that exist in the environment around this house, I used again in our landscaping. I put some gravel down and then just had like some cactus plants and stuff like that coming out of it. So there's still greenery, but it isn't like, you know, <laughs> a big front yard with lush grass and stuff. And then, oh my goodness, the wallpaper was probably the second hardest thing for me. The exterior was the main struggle. I feel like the interior came together quite nicely, but the exterior, I really, really had a hard time figuring out what I wanted. I was trying to mix a lot of colors and a lot of materials together. So I wanted to use the orange and like the dark gray. It's almost like a bluish gray. And then I wanted to have white to match the trim and so I was trying to mix and match those things together and figure out what made the most sense. I found this cute wood paneling. So I was just going back and forth a lot. We tried a whole bunch of different variants before ending on the last thing that I picked, which is wood on the base, white on the top, and then some blue metal accents. And while I'm working on this, I, I do have one small confession to make, okay? So I know I said it's a limited pack build. And realistically, this build only uses the base game and eco lifestyle. I didn't even use anything from Tiny Living. Like it could very easily not have that either. It's just classes a tiny lot. But but there was one thing that I, I couldn't stop myself from using and it's that growing together column. There's such a lovely just plain white square column from growing together and we unfortunately don't have anything like that in the base game which is so dumb. Like you'd think that we would but we don't. And so I um <laughs> I, I kind of use the growing together column. So this house technically is base game, eco lifestyle, and growing together. But I didn't use anything else from growing together. Just the column, just the column. It's so funny how such small things become so necessary and like really obviously lacking from the base game. Like you wouldn't think that a plain, just plain square straight column shouldn't be that big of a deal. Why don't we have that in the base game? Can they bring that growing together column and make it base game or something? Like I don't even, I don't care. And at this point, we all bought growing together, a lot of us at least, like eight years ago. I don't, just give it to everyone, please. <laughs> please. Or better yet, give us a new one if you really want to. I wouldn't complain. You always need more simple things like columns. It really is funny how the smallest things are what stands out as being lacking to me. Like I, I desperately want some more plain curtains as well. Just plain, no pattern, no fanciness to it. Just like some plain, nice curtain panels in like beige and white. <laughs> I just want some plain, plain curtains, maybe gray if we're lucky. You'd think that we'd be asking for like more complicated fancy things, but no. <laughs> plain column, plain curtains, plain rug perhaps would be lovely. Just like a simple, soft looking, plain textured rug. No funky patterns, just, just plain. That'll do. Anyway, I'm talking too much. <laughs> We're on the inside of the house now. We're kind of figuring out layout a little bit. So when you first walk in the front door, there's a staircase and then like a little living room space. I ended up putting a little TV and a big couch. In the back, there's a dining table in front of the window. And then in the corner, I've got a nice big kitchen. One of the fun parts about tiny houses and the different tiers of them is that by the time you get to the top tier tiny house, it's not really a tiny house. Like a hundred tiles is kind of just the size of a starter home. So this wasn't 
that hard to fit things into, to be honest. I've done my fair share of micro homes and stuff. This is not one of them. The micro home would be like the size of the living room, you know, <laughs> the whole house. We have a lot more space to work with here. Having a giant dining table like that is like a serious luxury that you don't get in regular tiny houses. We also have a pretty decent sized bathroom. Sometimes I'll make tiny homes and the bathroom is like three by one tiles or two by one tiles. I think this bathroom is seven tiles total. So you've got plenty of space for walking and like activities. And that's part of the problem too with why it got so expensive so fast. I, it just, it really sort of starts to spiral because I, I put all these fancy things outside and then I was like, oh, you know what? Let's get a 2000 simoleon TV. Let's get a mid tier priced fridge. And then it, it just grows and grows and all of a sudden it's a giant expensive house. <laughs> well, not giant, small. It's a small house. Anyway, upstairs, there's just a very, very small lofted bedroom area. And I used this really cool fence from Eco Lifestyle. It's quite tall, so it almost looks like a wall, but you can see through it, so it lets light in and stuff. That way you have a little bit of privacy in that upstairs bedroom. And I wish that I could have moved the bed around a little bit and like rotated it differently. But with where the staircase was and where that balcony door was, it just didn't really work anywhere else. I guess in an ideal world, you probably wouldn't want the head of the bed just facing the front door and the stairs, but it isn't that big of a deal. It's the Sims, so they'll be okay. I tried to put it up against the fence, but it, it just didn't really work because the door was in the way. While I'm doing this, I have a couple little pro tips for you. If you happen to have Eco Lifestyle, one of the things that bothers me a lot about that pack is how half of the good furniture is locked behind cheats. And I understand that a lot of you probably know that already because you maybe watch Sims YouTubers or you've had the pack for a while, but I think the average Sims player might not realize that you can access these things. So for example, the bed that I'm using in this room and the rug upstairs are both debug from Eco Lifestyle. So is the sofa downstairs. And I think maybe even the table downstairs. And it sucks because those items are cool and made that way on purpose because they're like gameplay unlocks. Cause with that pack, your Sims can use the fabrication skill to craft furniture. There's this like weird fabrication object. So you can go in there and like find dyes and then make things with it. And while on one hand, I really like that feature. It's a cool idea for gameplay. A lot of players don't play with that gameplay and you might not know that there's more options in build mode for you. And so I wish that it was a little bit easier to access. Maybe instead of being behind debug, if it were like shown in the catalog and it had like the gameplay unlocks cheat instead, just because that way it would be in the catalog so you would know it was there and be reminded of it. I think that all the time about the cast stuff too, because a lot of the packs have some pretty cool unlockable create a sim items. Eco Lifestyle is actually one of them. There's a ton of stuff that you can get from the careers in Eco Lifestyle. And there's like some really cute accessories like earrings and things. And you just don't see them in create a sim unless you play with the career. And I don't really like that. I'm okay with it when it's like very specific uniform items for clothing. So like to give an example, if your sim was maybe in like the fast food part-time job, if there was like a specific fast food uniform, I. I guess. Actually, no, never mind. I was going to say it'd be okay if it was locked behind the, the cast walls, but never mind. I don't want that. If they're making any assets, they shouldn't be impossible to unlock. I, I wish that in Create a Sim, more of those assets were obvious that they were there and that there was like an easy cheat to unlock them. Cause I'm pretty sure that the unlockable cheats don't even really work in Create a Sim. Like I, I don't think that the ignore gameplay unlocks one does. There's specific cheats for like the nifty knitting stuff to unlock it, but that's a little bit more obvious anyway because you can see that stuff in, in Create a Sim. So I just wish that it wasn't so hidden. Because again, I really think the average Sims player will never realize that it's there. I think it's safe to assume that a lot of you would, but you got to think about how many people play this game and don't watch Sims YouTube or like don't obsessively play the Sims. Maybe they just got given Eco Lifestyle for their birthday and they don't know anything about it. So how would they know? So anyway, I talk about it all the time, but Sims team, please, in the future, stop locking things <laughs> behind all these cheats that are impossible to access. We've sort of moved on to the backyard now while I've been ranting. And so we're putting in some last minute touches out here. In the back, we've got a little cute table. I did put some plants outside, kind of like some garden planters. I also put some bugs. <laughs> There's these cute little bug boxes in the pack. So I put them out here. You can have worms in them and your Sims can get stuff from the worms. <laughs> There's also a cute bike. That is also craftable by your Sims. 
And then on that top floor, the way, way, way rooftop, I put a couple other lounge things, like a lounge chair and some more plants. For some reason, I decided to use Johnny Zest as my tester sim for this. I don't really know why. <laughs> Cause sometimes I'll use like a randomized sim from Cass. Sometimes I'll get like Stanley Humphrey, my weenie sim. This time I took Johnny Zest and put him here. But I mean, he might like this house. It is kind of fancy. So I like Johnny Zest. He's a nice guy. Real shame about his family. If you didn't know, here's another secret. Oh my goodness. Johnny Zest belongs to the land grab family. Johnny Zest is a land grab. If you read Johnny's little backstory from Managed Worlds, it'll tell you that the land grabs are Johnny's parents. And the story is that he was disowned because he wanted to be a comedian, which didn't really fit in their like land grab vision for him, which is actually really sad and also gives Johnny like a way, way, way more interesting backstory. But the thing is, if you play in game, he doesn't even know them. Like he has no relationship panel to them. He's not in the family tree. It's just that little blurb inside of his backstory. And I wish that like maybe he had a all red bar with Nancy or, or something to make it more obvious to the average player or honestly just to make it a little bit more realistic. Like he, he would still know about them, but The Sims consistently fails to fix people's relationships in game. They always do this. It's not new. But anyway, I will stop complaining now because we are done with the build. I want to pop back into the game really quick and show you a tour of the finished product. I made this on that little 20 by 15 lot where the Nook Stone starter home used to be. And on the gallery, it's called Eco tiny house because it's not really a tiny home. I put it up as a regular house instead because I didn't want it to count as using tiny living because I didn't technically use tiny living, but if you have the pack, you can switch it into a tiny house. Costs 36, almost 37,000 simoleons. And it says I use three packs because I used eco lifestyle, I used get together. And I also use that free pack, the holiday pack for these fairy lights. So here's what the finished product looks like. When you first walk up to the front door, I have some plants. I love this little cactus thing flower thing. I don't know. I've never used this before. I kind of forgot it existed. The mailbox is over here as well. And then you can come around the back. I have a little bit of landscaping placed. I liked this cool wall piece. I thought it matched the color scheme really well. And it kind of gave some interest there on the wall. There's lights following this pathway. Around the back, we have a bike. We also have a little dining table. There's some more plants. These are actual plants that your sims can grow. And then these are the worms that I was talking about. You can fill this with mites or things that you want to. I also have trash cans in the way, way back which is kind of annoying because you can't access them that easily, but I, I didn't really care. When I was play testing this, I had Johnny standing right here, not on purpose, but he was just standing right there and I kept trying to get him to go upstairs and I was like, why won't he go up there? It's because he was trapped. He was like in between all the walls, so he couldn't get out. Anyway, the build works um, as long as your sim's not trapped. It works. And then when you come inside, this is the front door area. I put a mirror and like a little shelf for your sim stuff. Down here is the living room. We've got another shelf, a big TV. I like this little drinks tray from Eco Lifestyle. And then back here, this is the dining table. We have a little kitchen and I found some cool wall decor from Eco Lifestyle. I love this thing. I've never used this before either. I just don't really remember that it exists most of the time, but I put that there. There's like a leaf on the wall. <laughs> this is the bathroom. We have a little sink, a toilet and a shower. I also put this thing here so it looks like it's floating on the windowsill. Kind of annoying to place. And also when the walls are down, it looks like it's floating, floating, but that's okay. Cause it's kind of cool. And then upstairs we have this kind of private lofted bedroom. Here's that fence I mentioned. I did a fake headboard. These are just cabinets, like wall cabinets, but I put them there and then scooted the bed into it. So it looks like a big fancy headboard. In my head, I was trying to envision places that we could add storage because it's a tiny house. You'd probably want stuff like that here. I did put some paintings here rested on it. There was like a desert one that kind of worked. We've got a bright orange wardrobe. And then out here, I put a little tiny easel. Not a lot of space, just one easel. And then you can go all the way up to the rooftop where we have a telescope so your sims can die. <laughs> we got a couple more plants and a lounge chair. There's also some solar panels up here. So that should help with your sims bills. And that is the finished product. It's on my gallery if you want to download it. My name is just Lil Simsy on there, so it shouldn't be too hard to find. And before I go, I want to give a huge thank you again to our sponsor today, ThreadUp. Like I mentioned earlier, they're giving you 40% off your first purchase using my link and code Kayla, so make sure you check that out. Much like our sustainable eco home, thrifting is also more sustainable. So if you're looking for any new clothes, make sure you check out ThreadUp. Thank you for watching, and I'm going to catch you all tomorrow. Okay, bye everybody. Oh, and by the way, I built this on Twitch first. So if you wanna ever watch me building stuff live, you can kind of give like live feedback and stuff. My name is just Lil Simsy. I'll have it linked down below too.